This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to this episode of Back to the Story, where friends come together to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'll be your DM, Klaus. Let's get started. How do three paladins of separate gods... But if you ask me what my calling would be, I'd say that of a defender of my friends. I would give my life to see them through. I could have, but I didn't. And every day has been beautiful since. I think I'm surrounded by good things. A cleric on a hunt for redemption. I need it for my friends, family, these people that I love, who have always been the answers to my prayers. Whatever the hell you are. I don't know if deserving has anything to do with anything. A storyteller. And if you ever need me ever again, let me know. And one that I haven't figured out yet. I think that would take me a while to find someone more knowledgeable than me. All come together. And there's not a bit of fate in that. I think you mispronounced friends. Well, I will drink to that. When you see God's rest surrounded by armies, then know that his desolation has come near. Take these wings to Nymanet. Carry them home. <laughs> Episode 48, I Die. The frigid breath exhales, freezing fractals of ice upon the ship. Stiffening the sails, extinguishing the torches. The mist creeps, slowly grasping from the fog towards the ship, clawing and thrashing. The captain, garbed in thick furs and frosted goggles, holds a lantern of green fire against its slow, surrounding incursion. We see a bird's eye view of the captain in the center of the deck, in a bubble of icy mist held back by the green light. Through frozen breaths, the captain whimpers. It was always us. You can't have it. And from the mist come the orbs, their light dimmed. And as they surround the captain, the mist forms into a skull. <laughs> the captain inhales the breath of the wraith. Remembrance of Captain Ulrich. Previously, as the bronze scales pursued the eldritch assassin who escaped from the escriptorium, they found themselves beneath the viaduct under Nymanet. Here they struggle against dark mantles, recovering before continuing deeper. Tracking the scales found themselves in a large cavern upon a wide ledge overlooking a deep underground ravine. Red lights blinked around them, then tunneling as a huge insect burst from the ground, meeting them eye to eye. The strange lights threw several of the scales into a stupor. Fighting them off, at least a dozen more red-eyed insects began moving towards them along the walls and tunneling. The scales retreated. Chase for some time, the scales ran, getting far enough away that they could slow, though they were still being tracked in the distance. Eventually, you entered the abandoned ruins of some forgotten civilization, guarded by still-functioning machinations and adorned with reliefs depicting ancient figures of importance. Past a great din of columns, you found yourself outside of two lifts, one level and one far below. On the lift, you found beds and benches whose use became clear as the lift continued to descend. Twelve hours later, you reached the bottom, further into this ancient city beneath Nor, finding your way forward when you came upon undead skeletons, with the same ruins as those you fought in the undercrofts of Whiteguard. Past the undead, Ball and an enlarged Ezekiel lifted the massive stone doorway. As you entered, you were set on upon by the other side, a few scouts, an Umbok mage, the Eldritch assassin, and one Eliza underwater. A blast of frozen fractals from the mage covered you in frostbite but was quickly restrained by the serpentine Ezekiel. The Eldritch assassin rushed in, driving daggers into the back of Vesper before being brought down by a series of attacks. When Meli banished Eliza, the Ombok and the remaining scout surrendered, allowing you all to set up your shots for when she returned. A critical curse from Amson kept Eliza on this side of the ethereal veil long enough for the rest of you to strike her down, Ball delivering the final cutting blow of radiant energy. We come back to the story here. After defeating Eliza, you've all spoken to the Umbach, one officer of Braun Farrakh, about the goals of the Will, who are apparently working with a number of other factions, 
all of which seek not the destruction of the gods, but the destruction of the divine gate and release of divine energy called essence. Officer Farrakh offered to answer your questions and even show you more in Felnor should you desire. You've all just let Officer Farrakh and the two scouts use the teleportation circle to shift out of your presence, leaving you in the ancient ruins of the Ombok city and the teleportation room with the bodies of the recent dead upon the ground. What would you like to do? Well, I'm not sure we should stick around here too much longer. I think he was telling the truth about safe passage and all that, but who knows if his allies will agree to what he's agreed to. Yeah, I feel the same. I think he's being honest with us, and he didn't seem all that bad, but we do know that one gentleman on the other side would probably not be thrilled to see us. We should at least try and make it back to town, get this thing back up to the temple of I always forget, there are so many of those other gods. What was that one? Uh, Severa? Right, right, the the brainy one. Speaking of brains, I'd like, Melly, if you could uh, take a look at this artifact, schematic, whatever it is, see what you can make of it before we take it back. We have a 12-hour elevator ride. Can we at least get that started? Yeah. So, I do have a concern, though. After the elevator ride, after we get out of the Dwarven City, um, there was that, you know, gap in the ceiling that we all repelled down. How are we getting past that? You guys want to ride some spiders? I'm okay with that. Yeah. Effective. Ball, we might have to, I don't know, help them. If we go up first, tie a rope to him and help pull him up, we might uh, be able to get him up. Well... How long do you think it would take a spider to get him back up there? How tall was that wall that we, like, had to rappel down? There's, I think, a ten-foot gap between the top of the ceiling and then the floor above. And that's, like, 40 feet from cavern ceiling to water. Okay. So they'd have to crawl up the wall to the ceiling. I don't think the spiders can get ball up. The rest of us, yes. But well, the I... Sorry. I could make Ball smaller for a short amount of time. Couldn't you... You used to be able to spider climb yourself. Can you still do that? Mm, haven't been able to do it for a while. Ah. Well, yeah, if you can make him smaller, I can't imagine more than ten minutes at all. It'd probably only take a few. Uh, if you can make him smaller, I can actually get him up there quite quickly. If that works, that works. I mean... As long as we don't burn through anything too powerful we need for that tentacle beast. Yeah. But I can get us some spiders. They last for an hour, so they should be able to get us up. Okay, sounds like we have a plan for that then. Let's uh let's grab what we need and get on out of here. We are already thoroughly looted, right? I think so, but just to to cover, there was the assassin, the Eldritch assassin, there was one dead scout. And then there was a table with some arcane stuff, including the schematic. And um, a bag of holding? Was... And a bag of holding, yeah, as well. So are you all just grabbing? What are you What are you grabbing? I assume all of that. but Probably all of that. Yeah. yeah. We'll grab whatever we can off of the, the dead people and scoop up stuff. We sure. can take a look at what's in this bag when we're in the elevator. Okay. So I'm just going to scoop the stuff on the table, including the Arcanatech schematic, into the bag of holding. The scout, dead scout, has a bow, a simple scimitar, some arrows. The assassin is wearing what looks like a a fine dark silk cloak. They have the dagger and scimitar on them, and they have a necklace around their neck as well. Of note, just going quickly. And uh, we need to take the body back, don't we? They mainly wanted the schematic, didn't they? Or did we? I think there was a something? bonus for yeah, yeah. this body and for the one that we fought in the library. Who I, I kind of glance at the bag. She might be in there. Do you think he'll also fit? Can I reach into the bag and see if she's in there? Yeah, you reach in, think about that body, and you're able to find something. Well, she fit, so I guess we probably fit him as well. 
Yeah, I'll pick it up and try and stuff it in the bag. Okay. Yeah, you you lift him up and push him in. His shoulders are a little broader, but you, you do eventually are able to stuff him into the bag. It's not an easy task, but once inside, you're able to... Trying to, to get the trash bag out of the can, just like... <clears throat> Yeah. Shaking it a little bit. Shaking it, and there's that that last bit where the shoes are stuck on something on the mm-hmm. edge, and you eventually get it in there, close the flap. Uh, well, okay, let's... Man, we're going to have to put them back in once we dump it out, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, well. well let's get the fuck out of here. Okay. So you guys kind of retrack or retrace your tracks, exiting out of the teleportation room. Heading back through the Ombak ruins and eventually finding where the landing or where the lifts are at the landing den. The one you descended down is now at the bottom. You can climb aboard. Um, that lever is there. And as soon as you're on aboard and you hit the lever, the gate drops on that side. And that clicking begins and it slowly begins rising up in the darkness. So there's a 12 hour window, as you saw before, when you're on this elevator. So if there's anything you guys wanted to do, resting or whatever, um, now's a good time. Is Roger back? I'll take that as a no. Uh, so if he is, I will have something I want to do. Well, do we want to take a look at all this stuff before we sleep? Make sure we know what it is? Yeah, and honestly, we already just slept. I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep again on this thing. We'll see. It's long, and there's not much to do. True. <laughs> I could cast sleep on you if you want to pass the time. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, let, let's take a look at this, at least at the schematic, and whatever else might be in this bag. Let's take the schematic out and then dump it? Yeah. Okay. Let's see you guys. Pull the schematic out, and it's about a two foot by one foot stone slab with a number of arcane glyphs and runes upon it. Geometric shapes seemingly almost overlapped over one of each other's a complex mess. You put that to the side, turning over the satchel, dumping it out. Two bodies fall out the Eldritch Assassin, as well as the other body, as well as a number of other things. A bunch of torches fall out, rope, rations, some gold pieces. And gold pouches all kind of fall out onto the floor, um, as well as a the stuff you all um, threw in there off the table, all the notes and whatever, uh, all that stuff falls out as well. What did you guys want to look at? Um, I'll start taking a look at the notes and trying to like organize them into something. Okay. So looking at the notes, go ahead and roll me an investigation check. Let's grab this. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, looking at it, it initially looks like a language you're not familiar with, though it does look sort of like Dru- uh, sort of like dwarven runes, though not quite. But as you continue to look over it, it looks like it's not just a different language, but it is a code or cipher of some sort. There are some diagrams, some drawings, but most of it is in uh, code. Uh, with some time, you might be able to figure it out, but. You would probably need at least an hour to try to crack the code. Well, I've got 12, so I'll do it. Okay. Roll another investigation check. So that was your just initial looking over it. This is to actually try to crack that code. Um, Okay, so for the next... Get Amson or Melly to assist me. But I should have said that ahead of time, so... Nine. So for for the next hour, Vesper is pouring over these notes. You you see a few maps of what looks like the Videct of Naimunet, um, a few other places you're not familiar with, um, but you're spending the next hour trying to crack this code. So as Vesper is looking over that dossier, what are the rest of you guys looking at or doing? I'll use Detect Magic just to see if anything pings. Sure. The saber that the assassin was using pings. The cape on his back pings. The locket around his neck pings. It's all magic. I'll just kind of scoop all of them up, smile, and put them in between Melly and Amson. Not another fucking sword. What's this one going to do? I take it and I stab Amson. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking speaking of which, can I be the one that identifies the sword? Because obviously if I identify it, it means it's going to be cursed. (laughs) Sure. So you use identify as a ritual or casting the spell, whichever way you prefer. Um, so yeah. the 
sword is actually a saber, but it's a, it's a short saber. It shows this curved blade of silver metal as subtle etchings of swirling smoke along the blade edge. And though it's not quite as long as a long sword, it's longer than most scimitars. At the end of the blade, the gentle curving metal becomes harsh, hooking back into a half crescent at the end. The handle grip is also a reverse grip wrapped in soft leathers. Uh, so as you identify that uh, there's magic that kind of comes off of it and you recognize that if anyone to were to attune to this, they would have a plus one to hit and damage. In addition, if they also attune to the old witch locket, the saber becomes light as smoke, allowing you to make an additional attack as a bonus action, even if you're not dual wielding, and you'd be able to recall the saber through smoke to you instantly through a bonus action falling into your hand. Okay, so I'll convey that it has to, it's linked to the locket and will grant extra powers if you have both. Let me guess, they're both cursed. Um, as Amson is identifying that, Melly, were you going to identify one of the other two items? Uh, yeah, I'll identify the cloak. Okay. So the Eldritch Cape, it's a long, dark cape of dark black silk. It smells of incense, uh, drapes over the shoulders, and is attached to each shoulder by a silver buckle at each shoulder with a strange symbol of uh, silver ge geometric runes. If you look closely to the fabric, you can see very faint stitching of silver threads woven all down the back of the cape, resembling swirls of smoke. These swirls of smoke appear to move faintly if you look close enough. Identifying it, you uh, realize that when, while you're wearing this cape, you can use it to cast Dimension Door as an action, leaving behind an after image of incense smoke where you left, lightly obscuring that place you left until the end of your next turn. Uh, once it's used, you can't use it again until the next midnight. I will tell the others this, but I will also not let go of the cloak as I'm telling them this. That could certainly come in handy. So who wants to identify the last item? I guess I can do that. Okay. So this is the a locket of the old witch, a tomb required by a spellcaster. This small silver chain leads to a locket about the size of a large gold coin. It is intricately etched with runes and glyphs seeming overlapped with one another. Inside, as you open it up, is a small shard of silver glass Looking closely, the glass itself has intricate crystalline structure of fractures inside of it. As you identify and press into it, you feel the power radiating off of that crystal in the locket itself. Uh, focus, the locket focusing the power of the crystal. While attuned to it, a spellcaster gets a plus one to their spell attacks and to their spell save DC when they use it as an arcane focus. As you press in, you sense a presence attached to the locket, something on the other side which must agree to allow one to attune to this locket. You can feel that presence pushing out towards you. Do you resist? Yeah. Okay, you pull away. Easy enough putting it down. And I'll tell everybody else that it is possibly possessed, and it does all of these things. So them together, you would be an excellent martial spellcaster hybrid, type of warrior. However, there seems to be some sort of intelligence to the locket. Lovely. Get rid of it, I'm guessing. Why do you all assume that only evil things lurk inside of items? Well, context in this case. Many th things have been called witches over the years. My people, it's for one. not the I'm witch part. The it's the... the I mean, I guess, fair point, we did find it on them. Yeah. But one of them was, you know, not awful. Who did we take this off of? The one that stabbed me and almost killed me. I mean, clearly it was helpful to him. <laughs> okay. Though, honestly, it doesn't take that much to stab me. Ezekiel just giggles. Anyway, maybe we want to take a look at that schematic. That's what I'm the most curious about. Maybe no one answer should take a look. I'm not looking for stuff. While you're doing that, can I see the logger? Yes, uh, Ezekiel 
you can see the locket. Great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time with it. But I will be casting protection from evil and good on myself as I do that. Sure. Coward. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you um, always think it's bad stuff? <laughs> I'm not Coward saying we don't. Like a man, Ezekiel. <laughs> don't take precautions. <laughs> so, um, Ezekiel, since you, you kind of step aside looking at the locket, um, as you spend time with it, you feel that pulse of energy from the crystal and you feel a presence move in next to you um, it's a strange feeling like a feeling like you're being watched almost you can feel something there that you don't see it uh i will present myself not unlike a peacock okay kind of opening yourself up like a peacock i suppose uh, to this presence you can kind of feel it shift into your mind but slowly, almost like it's seeping in, not a not quickly or rapidly or aggressively, but slowly seeps in surrounding you. And where did you find this? With someone who tried to kill my friends. With one of my hands. Well, I suppose you are better. What would you ask of me? Mostly just curiosity. We've had dealings with people like, did you say your hand? Oh, suddenly things are all making a whole lot of sense from what that man last time said. Hi there. Hello. Do you wish something from me? Or have you something to offer? Forgive me, my name is Ezekiel. Do you have a name? I am called the Old Witch. That will do. Well, it seems this locket offers a blessing. I guess I'm curious what strings are attached to that blessing. Depends what you have to offer. My company is not enough? Hmm. Perhaps. My desires are different from the mortals around me. I was here long before they came. I'll be here long after. Should you be open to my nudging desires, I can lend you a bit of aid, a boon, in power. Well, I know all about nudging desires. Hmm. Could you possibly elaborate on an example of one of your desires you've had in the past, so I can make an educated decision? Sometimes I have my hands retrieve something for me, kill something for me, erase something for me. I see your hesitation, mortal. I am not some fiend from hell. I'm not after your soul. It is of little value to me. This is not a contract, but a conversational agreement. Fair enough. Well, forgive me, you have mastery of arcane magics, though, if I'm understanding this correctly. My magic is divine. Oh. Oh, well, that, that may actually... I should probably confer with my friends. Some of them lack their shiny things a lot more than I do, and I try not to be all that greedy. It, you, you do understand. And some of them are probably much more powerful and willing to get you things. I tend to be a little lazy and sort of singularly... Quiet. Keep incense on you should you wish to make the bond. And you feel the presence leave from you completely. It was as if you were in a room full of thick smoke enveloping you, almost as if you were underwater and you feel it, that presence suddenly shift away, remove itself. Okay, she's super creepy, but I don't necessarily get pure evil. Just, you know, normal creepy evil. Moderate like, evil? Yeah, like, not necessarily going to possess you, but 
might stop helping if you decide not to kill whatever baby she's after. She didn't specifically mention killing babies, but I don't know. Seems like something she would do. Right. Not like often. I kind of liked it. <laughs> uh, something about incense, too. So, but now we know. Well, that's creepy and weird. How's the schematic? Who's looking at it? Whoever. I, I am with Anson's help. Okay. Yeah, I think Melly and I are tag teaming it. Sure. And so uh, roll. Uh, Ellery's just peering over their shoulders and hovering a lot. Sure. Uh, so Melly, go ahead and roll an investigation check at advantage. Thank you. That's a good time to roll it. That's a natural 20 for a total of 25. Melly, you study this thing for 15, 30 minutes, about an hour of studying this thing. You start to piece it together. At first, you think it's some sort of something like a spell scroll, something you can use to cast something. That is, you continue to trace the runes and separate them, jotting down notes on pieces of paper. You start to separate the overlapping runes and glyphs and see it as an instruction manual. Not unlike ones you've seen before, but this one is used to make an arcane focus. A arcane focus more complicated than any one you've ever seen before or read about before. The power required to create this thing alone is substantial. What it could do, once fully realized, could be power beyond you've ever read about or heard about. And with a natural 20, the power that this arcane focus, if made, could probably rival gods. Um, what are we doing with the schematic again? Oh, they stole it, so we were hired to get it back for the temple. Uh, and the temple's not using it for anything? I assume they've had it for quite some time. I can't imagine they're using it. Okay. I just wanted to check, because uh, this would make someone as powerful as a god, and I don't think that we should let people have it. I think from our experience with the Temple of Severa is that they tend to collect a lot of knowledge, but not necessarily use it. Uh, didn't they say that whatever this is, is theoretically impossible to actually make? Right, theoretically. Theoretically. That's not a bet I think any of us are willing to make. Yeah. I think we just take it back to the temple and let them find a safer place for it. Yeah, maybe they'll do a better job of protecting it this time than they did before. Like not a bookshelf. I guess I can understand why these people wanted it then. If they were able to make this thing. True, and who knows what they're capable of over on the other side. May not be theoretically possible in our plane, but. But they have architects and children of gods who used to make things like this. Right. That's a thought. Sure. And if they're trying to rival the gods, they don't know. I think the temple is about as safe as place as we're going to get. I mean, they'll be prepared for an incursion this time. I can't imagine they were expecting anything before. Unless the, it, the next attack's in a few years and they get complacent again. Well, tell me, Melly, where would you take it? I would keep it. Right. We're going to walk around and go to the other side, potentially, with this item? <laughs> yeah. We're definitely not taking this. If If we go to that meeting that he suggested, we are not taking this with us. Or we could destroy it. Then nobody gets it. And what if one day it is needed? It says it's all theoretical. We don't even know if it's possible. We don't. And we don't even know if it could possibly be used for good. To destroy it is simply to decide that it should have no future. Not seeing where the future leads. We've done this with items before, though. Most of them tried to kill us. And we weren't specifically requested to retrieve it intact. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind Although, of the perspective that the Temple of Severa has. Ezekiel. It might be useful one day, but yeah. 
do you really care that much about what we were requested to do? I did give my word. Mm, fair point. I try point. and honor those things. If it was absolutely evil, then I would say fuck them. But as of now, they have been its protectors for who knows how long. I don't think one mistake is necessary. They have plenty of other things in there, I'm sure, that could lead to this world's destruction. This city is a hotbed of divine energy. If they're aware of how important this is, how powerful it is, I think they already know that, probably. And if they're aware of who it is that's trying to use it, then I think they'll have a better idea than we will of how much it will take to protect it. And they can probably coordinate with the other temples if they don't have the means to protect it themselves. This is the sort of thing that I think all of the gods and all the temples might have an interest in. So, my suggestion, I think maybe we talk to the temple heads of the various different faiths and see what they advise. So that's all you all want to do. I don't see that that would be a problem. Uh, they most likely have already known that this thing exists. And if they didn't, then I guess the bigger problem is how did this cult learn? So is that the plan then? We take this back up, we gather folks from all the temples and make sure everybody knows what's going on? I even imagine that's the best course of action if gods are in danger or whatever is happening. Mm. Maybe we could even go to this meeting and, and spy, I guess, for our side. I don't know. What meeting are we talking about? I'm, I'm real uh, confused. The one it. on the other side? With that, uh, what's his name? Braun? Oh, right. I thought you were still talking about the, the schematic one. Yeah, I think, I think we should try it. Uh, I mean, we haven't really known about these people before. Uh, at least no one's that we've met has had any idea about them. I'd like to learn why they're doing what they're doing, and maybe we can come to a better solution. But until we understand what they face, I don't... After meeting... What was his name? The stone guy. Braun. Just... Braun, Braun something. After meeting Braun, I mean... They have their own sort of faith in whatever this is. It feels right to at least hear it out. I have a certain amount of respect for what they're trying to do, or what they claim to be trying to do. They don't deserve to be punished for whatever their ancestors did, but most people don't deserve what they get, good or bad, from what their ancestors did. But I don't blame them for reaching out and trying to make their situation better. Though, I will tell you one thing. I'm not fucking willing to align myself with this will. No, I don't think we have to worry about that, but I'm just hoping maybe we don't have to have a war with every person on that side. Even if we have to eradicate a few diseases. I can agree with that. And um, Vesper looks like she kind of is relieved for like the first time since we talked to them. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I mean... Forgiveness, redemption, seeking divinity, that's kind of what the Ayin's teachings are all about. I feel like I'm almost at an odds of faith to a goddess and faith to her ideals. And I definitely don't want to align myself with the will. That's for sure. But I do feel bad for these people and I do want to see them get whatever light we can help bring them. Maybe that just means bringing them over here. Setting them up somewhere that isn't a horrifying shadow world. But there yeah, must definitely. be a reason they haven't done that already. They clearly can pass to the other side if it was truly awful there. That should, as soon as they found a way, they would have gathered their people over. Right. It, it seems more like it's about restoring divinity to the world, which is, you know. I don't know what to make of that. Part of it sounds nice, but 
it probably really isn't as nice as it sounds. Sometimes what's also important to look at is to not only look at the ideals, but the intentions of the ideals. People can have the same ideals, but with different intentions, and all of a sudden it means something completely different. Do you think we should hold on to what we found? Maybe see wrong, find out why it is we're doing what we're doing? I still think we should just give it back. <laughs> I mean, we have enough of this particular conflict weighing on us. Do we want this one other piece to be all in our fate as well? Yeah, I'm with you, Ezekiel, on this. I, I trust the Temple of Severa, even though they lost it in the first place, but they can remedy that and do something better. But I do think that finding out what Bronn wants would be beneficial to know, just in case we ever do end up in this... <laughs> in the deep end of this mess. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've had a is this our problem talk. I think we give it back to the temples. If we need to, I'm sure we can find a way to remedy a mistake. Well, you have your connections to various temples. At least let yours know so that someone else is watching over it. May help, if nothing else. This, all of this, I mean, if we're going to talk to these people about something that affects two whole worlds, I think that's a little bit bigger than something that we can handle on our own. So we should definitely tell our respective temples about what's going on. That we're about to go treat with people that want to break our god's greatest creation? Yes, I'm sure they're going to be perfectly okay with that. I just think right now, the more friends we make on both sides, the better off we're going to be when we pick a side or pick an amalgamation of different parts of different sides or whatever we end up doing. I'm not saying we should inform anybody before. Well, I don't know. What do you think? What would be better, to inform people and then go off to a meeting or go off to a meeting and then inform people or not bother with the meeting or... I'm not saying anything to the Keepers before we go. They are too set in their ways anyway, and they'll try and force us to do the, what they want. And I'm not particularly interested in hearing their opinions on this. That's my decision in regards to my fellows in faith. Uh, uh, agreed, actually. Possibly just return the schematic and not say anything else to the temples, and then get into contact with Bronn and say, hey, what's going on? Again, though, a lot of Aeon's teachings are about redemption. It's about something similar to this. It, it feels wrong to just... I'm not, not like trying to just, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to decide for you. I, I think you have a point. If anyone, Aeon may have a place for these people. I'd like to talk to the redeemed at my temple, I think, before we go. I can try and get her to keep it to herself. But I think... Especially if we don't come back for whatever reason, it, it'd be good to have someone on this side know what's going on. And I think Aeon's probably the best order to to be that person. I have a question. This is something I haven't quite been able to understand from everything that we've learned so far. Why did the gods lock themselves away in the first place? If I understand a little bit, it was to, I mean, part of it was taking our, the other people's divinity away. If what Bronn was saying is true, they had to lock themselves to keep that separation. And it, forgive me, uh, was there an aspect of, like, locking all other gods away as well, or was is something being imprisoned at the same time, or is it just sealing us off from them? As far as of what I remember you guys finding out, uh, it was a little bit of both, though mostly separation. But the little bit of both is that some gods were seeking separation from the mortals who killed a god, and to the other gods thought the mortals were ascending beyond their station. Um, and so some gods sought to separate that. Um, there were other gods that were not interested in separating at all. And so there was a big conflict between the gods on that. 
So part of that was also they couldn't have separation while leaving other gods on the other side. It was kind of an all or nothing. So there's a conflict to um, seal off all of the gods. Got it. Besides the the god who stayed in order to form the Waystones, that side of the Divine Gate lock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was mostly just to keep us separate from them, partially probably out of protection for their own sake, if one died. I, I imagine, in short, it's to prevent what happened with the Shadow of Hell, what happened with the First World. They didn't want that to happen again. And it's clear that that did not go well. I mean, they may have a point in terms of the lot they got was unfair, but that doesn't mean it wasn't the correct decision. So, what can we do, our little group? To to help them get something a little bit more fair without, you know, destroying the fucking world. Maybe the first step is to hear them out. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the more we know about them personally, the more we can reach out and try and help them. It suggests better alternatives. I know they said they tried a lot already, and that's why it's come to this with the will. But maybe we can find a solution they haven't thought of before. Some kind of compromise they're willing to accept. So we're all on board for this meeting then? I believe so. Yeah, I am. I am. Melly? Yeah. Okay. Well, we should take care of our business here and head on. We're just going to try and send him a message, and he said he'd come back for us. Or do we have to go back down there? Uh. Oh, wait, no. He gave us... A way to contact him, yeah. And didn't we get a, a teleportation glyph? Or Melly did? I, think she, so. I don't know if she can use it yet. I don't have my notebook. So included in the documentation, the dossier that Vesper tried for a little while to decode, there was picture stuff that obviously wasn't coded, maps and stuff. One of them was a runic teleportation circle. It appeared to look roughly similar to the ones you guys saw down in the Ubok ruins. I'm but it depends on if Meli actually takes that spell and learns that or not. I'm going to give the, the notes to the much more clever Meli who can actually read Dorvish and let her try and cipher them out if she wants to. Yep, I will do that. And I am going to take the teleportation thing. So Okay. So with, with the teleportation thing, you get two. I'm also going to say since you have this separate one, you can learn this one as a third one. So you get this one for sure, and then the other two. We'll go ahead and sort out which ones you want to pick. If you don't want to pick them now, we can wait. The options would be White Guard, Embershore, Novikov, um, some others you I might make you roll for if you want other cities like Asmazars or something. Thank you. I pick later. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, just let me know. I go ahead and roll an investigation check to look over this ci uh, cipher of notes. And it's raining outside, so I apologize for the noise. Okay. Uh, Vesper, you kind of show her where you got started and where you got stuck. Uh, Melly, you begin taking it a step further, but don't get much further. I'll say you get the, f you begin to pick apart those beginning cipher and code, and you get the first couple section. So the first section says Campaign Shatter, Operation Hammer and Nail. Officer Farrakh, you will lead a team to Nymanet in New Nor with multiple prioritized objectives, which will follow. In this dossier, you will find numerous resources in the form of information and maps. Objective 1, and that's about where you get stuck, so about an hour of decoding, um, and you get only about that far. I guess so you, I'll read it to the others. So you guys have Still a couple hours left of travel. You could continue to work on this or other things. Just let me know what you guys want to do as those next couple hours are passing, if you're resting or whatever it is. I mean, uh, I will sleep if we can. Okay. I want to take a short rest, but I want to also kind of pull Eldery aside a little bit for a moment. Uh, yeah, sure. Hey, I, th um, I think Eldery, by the way, has just been like, when she's not focused on helping sort through all of the stuff that we're dealing with. She's just been pacing a lot and probably being very irritating 
just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I'll catch you on one of your, your loops and kind of try and keep it quiet so it's just you can hear me. I, um, would you help me talk to Ball? I, uh, I, uh, yeah, um. I'm just worried about uh, his temper and everything that's been going on lately with the fire. And I know you, uh, have experience with magic going awry and being tied to your emotions. I figured maybe you could lend some more insight. Um, honestly, I was thinking about talking to him myself, but I figured, I mean, he already has you. Well, you have a better opinion, I think. More up close and personal with this sort of thing. Maybe we can both talk to him. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for it. If he's willing. Mm -hmm. We've got a few more hours. You can pull him aside real quick and have a therapy sesh. <laughs> and the backdrop is just ball snoring. <laughs> yeah, I just... Can we go nudge him? Paul's internal clock and checks to see if it's been eight hours. <laughs> do you guys uh, wake him up in the middle of sleep or do you give him some time no, and wake him up later? We'll wake him up later because I think okay. I need to rest too for my small thoughts. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like a lot of people are taking the long rest just to do some admin stuff. I know some magic items had some special powers, and maybe that changes what you want to pick. Whenever you take a long rest, everything kind of becomes final. So you can change your decision or whatever, but long rest, you get your level up stuff. as well your spells back and all that. Melly, give me one more investigation check at advantage since you've gotten the code started. As the rest of you are taking a rest, and then uh, you'll wake up ball at the end of that. Okay. So, Melly, you finally get the code crack and are beginning now to feverishly translate this code. You see there are one, two objectives. The third one is torn off. Looks like that note was you're trying to find it in the dossier and can't find where that picks up. A number of resources that are translated and some notes as well. I will add that to your roll 20 thing for you. And then after eight hours of letting ball rest... Vesper and Ellery, you guys can nudge ball. Kind of wakes up. Uh, good morning. Hmm. Good morning. Or whatever time it happens to be right now. Yeah. Ball kind of takes a big stretch. Says, "Feels like morning to me." I'm gonna sit down next to him. I will sit on his other side. Is everything okay? Oh, good question. fucking question. <laughs> That's kind of why we want to talk to you. Bal, are you okay? Bal kind of looks at the wounds he's patched up, kind of checks underneath the bandages. Mm, I think so. I don't mean your wounds, Bal. Then I, I think so. It seems like there's been a lot going on with you. What do you mean? Well, all of these firestorms for starters, the aggression, the anger, that's not like you. Hmm. I think maybe I just feel like I want to do more. I don't think frustration in battle is that unusual, is it? I mean, the fire, that's... That is new. That, I don't quite understand yet, but I hope that I can control it. Feels a little bit familiar, to be honest. I know y you, you don't seem to like talking about things very much. And I don't really blame you for that. But it helps sometimes. This feels like something that I need to understand myself. Doesn't... And then Ball kind of looks at uh, Vesper and says, This doesn't feel like it is between me and Aileen. But between me and something. Well, even if the understanding has to come from you in the end, you don't have to look for it alone. You know we're all here for you, Ball. We all love you very much and just... I'm just worried. Thank you. I'll try to 
share how I'm how it's going. You don't have to talk if you don't want to or if you don't know how to put words to things. But I You remember when my magic first started flaring up? Well nuts. I still don't really understand it, and I don't totally know how to control it, but it helped having you around when that was happening in the beginning. Even when I was blaming you for it, it still, I felt safer with you around, and I want to be there for you the way that you were there for me. I know that you're all around, but maybe until I can better understand it, you might not want to stay too close. And Ball kind of makes like a little, uh, like a side smirk. It could get hot. Well, I can't speak for anyone else in the group, but I'm not afraid of getting a little scorched. I think I can deal with a bit of heat. I'm always going to be wherever you need me to be, Ball. I just, uh, I put my hand on his. Yeah, I think uh, Ball will put, like, one hand on Vesper's shoulder and kind of, like, a gentle by Ball standards kind of squeeze and then at the same time squeezes Allery's hand just as gently. And uh, says, uh, thank you. I'm going to make breakfast now. So you guys, after taking a rest, looking through over the magic items you guys found, attuning or not, and looking over the arc. Uh, the Arcanatech schematic. Um, you guys finally, after either waking up or waiting for the last bit, the lift locks into place at the top, the gate opening up, revealing the old walkway where you first entered uh, back at the top. And we will take a brief, let's say, 10 minute break and we'll continue from there. So Sounds good. good. Cool, 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 cool. So 940 or 10 minutes or whatever time it is. Next time, on Back to the Story. I feel it pulling you down further. You can now no longer see the water's too dark. I jump down. You guys sense something in your mind, like static of noise or thoughts rushing through your heads. It's strange. It moves and looks, resembles a plant. And yet it's made of this either glass or crystalline gemstone. You see it's gently glowing a violet pink color. For part two of this episode of Back to the Story, you can find it on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. We also have a YouTube channel called Back to the Story, an actual play podcast. If you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story.